We'll now move on to presentation about the Piglet experimental study on lung recruitment by Professor Goran Hedensternia from Uppsala. Sorry for killing your name, it's Goran Hedensternia. Fair enough. <laughs> it's tricky also in my own country. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, Siemens, and uh, dear audience, uh, I will uh, provide you with the background of uh, the potential need of uh, recruitment maneuvers in uh, the child. Um, I will just show you the uh, uh, Uppsala University from where I am, uh, pretty old at least to be up in the far north of Scandinavia or in Europe. Uh, Dr. Sylvia Jotberg is at another university and we will share this last part of the symposium. Uh, I will start with uh, describing what you can see in an anesthetized adult subject. I'm more familiar with that than uh, uh, pediatric cases. But this can be a good start and let us have a look at the child. What you can see here is a CT in an adult anesthetized subject. And you can see in the bottom of both lungs densities. These are atelectasis. This occurs in more than 90% of all patients who are anesthetized. If you then look to the right, you see a panel with the, the distribution of ventilation, the open squares, and the distribution of perfusion, the closed circles. Uh, you can see that ventilation goes mainly to upper regions, and in the bottom, there is no ventilation at all, corresponding to the region where we have atelectasis. But we do have perfusion in that region. So this collapsed atelectatic zone causes shunting and impaired oxygenation. Now, what does it look like in the small child? Well, we didn't dare to start directly with that. We thought it might be more if you go to bigger things. And we looked at pigs, sheep, and so on. Without finding that much, finally we moved to a horse or horses. They were brought into the CT scanner in the middle of night because it was not quite clear whether we had a permit or not. We even used black horses. And now, what does that look like when you do a CT scan? You can see the huge amount of densities at the lectasis in, in the horse. And I doubt that you have any, uh, seen a horse lying in dorsal recumbency, except for being anesthetized. Now, we wondered, Will we see anything at all if we go to a child, to a small baby? We started a couple of uh, one-month-old uh, children uh, during anesthesia and muscle paralysis. And to our surprise, they had as much or even more of atelectasis during anesthesia than the adult uh, patients. There is no difference or even it might be a little more in the anesthetized small child. How does that come? Well, uh, we know from other studies that uh, the airways are more narrow in proportion to the lung size in the child, and this can increase the tendency for airway closer, and that can cause uh, resorption at electasis. Another thing is that we have a more compliant chest wall that can uh, call when, when the tone of the chest wall is reduced, then the elastic forces of the lung can uh, pull in the chest wall and the lung volume goes down further than in an adult subject. So these two mechanisms might explain the uh, uh, rather large atelectasis that we do see in the anesthetized uh, child. Now, in a severe respiratory failure then, here you have an example. This is a 10-year-old boy with a severe acute respiratory failure. And you can see the widespread distribution of densities. This is edema, consolidation, atelectasis. Uh, to the same extent as you can see in an adult ARDS patient, or even more. This will, of course, depend on how severe the disease per se is. But the child is far from protected from these consequences. So we do have a reason to consider, can we open up this line? Do we have techniques to do it? And above all, can we be safe, secure when doing it? 
we would like to open up the tissue without over distending the already aerated tissue. Do we have tools to do that? Uh, we would expect that if we raise the inspiratory airway pressure, that we can open lung tissue. And we also can expect that if we apply tape, we can prevent recollapse of already opened up tissue. But what guidance do we have today? In the neonatal situation, we look at blood pressure. When it is falling, we assume that we have over distended the lung tissue. If tidal volume goes down when we successively increase pressure, it is an indication that we are over distending the lung tissue. We can look at blood gases, uh, at least to see that we don't have recollapse. But can we look at the over distension and potential or possible recollapse by simple bedside technique, because this can be a little tricky to do bedside continuously. So we hypothesize that uh, the CO2 output per breath can guide in preventing or limiting over distension during a recruitment maneuver. And the rationale to have this hypothesis is that when lung tissue is over distended, alveolar capillaries will be compressed and this increases the pulmonary vascular resistance and raises the pulmonary vascular pressure. And that will finally also result in a reduced pulmonary blood flow path output. And that will reduce the amount of expi expired carbon dioxide, at least temporarily. So that is the hypothesis uh, for using uh, CO2 measurement during the recruitment maneuver. There are confounding factors change in tidal volume will of course affect the amount that of CO2 that is expired, but you can compensate for that by correcting for the tidal volume. And we should also remember that we have a short transient um, when we modify, when we manipulate this ventilation, we will have sooner or later a return to the initial CO2 output. The other hypothesis is can dynamic respiratory compliance guide in detecting recollapse during a de recruitment maneuver? If we have opened up the lung, can we see by measuring compliance that at this level of PEEP we have beginning of collapse? The rationale is that uh, when lung is collapsing, less lung tissue can be inflated for a given airway pressure, and that will result in the fall in calculated compliance. So these are the two hypotheses that we thought of, and I will now leave to Sylvia Jotberg to demonstrate the results in a piglet study.